So can we start? Yes. Okay. So equality operations, and that is possible by using sequential equal method, sequence equal method, you can see that. And in this particular method, we compared sequence of two collections that are equal or not. It basically determined that two sequences, whether they're equal or not, by comparing the elements in pay-wise manner. Okay. And in two sequences contain the equality number of the elements or not. Okay. Link sequence equal method will return Boolean value true in case two sequence elements are equal and all the elements match in both the sequences. Otherwise, it will throw false. Sequence equal. So you basically put two objects out here. So we, if you look at this example, it will be better to understand it with an example. You have four string you can see and I'm going to basically print out for this let's come in this I'm going to come in this one by one um, doing a sequence equal on array one with array two four items Two sequences pairwise are equal. This is one pair. This is another pair. Number of items sequences are welcome to Tatlin com and welcome to Noida com. So it will basically used to check if both the sequences are equal or not. In the above example, uh, comparing two collections in the sequence equal method to check if both the sequences are equal or not, here we in use another property ordinal that will be used here out. Ignore the case. Here in these two, you're not ignoring the case. So are they equal? No, false. Right. Number of items of four, this is fine. This pair is fine. This pair is not fine. So right. that's not equal. So this is going to give you false. Let's run this. Uh -huh. Result is false. You can see that. Yep. Now look at this one. Comparing array one with array two. Now I am ignoring the case. If you ignore the case, number of items of four. I've ignored the case. That's fine. But here the item is different. Okay. So this is also supposed to be false. Yep. That's fine. So take this one. This is array one with array three. One with three. False again. Number of items four, three out here. This is matching, this is matching, this is matching, this is matching. Third one is not matching. There's no fourth item. This is also false. This is false. And then last. OK. 
it's comparing three with four three items welcome to noida welcome to noida ignoring the case this will be true Okay. True. So if I run this, this should be true. Yeah, this is true. That's how it works. And then we have concat operator. This is to combine. Concat method operator is used to concatenate or append two collection elements into a single collection. It does not remove the duplicates from the two sequences. It will have duplicates also. A, B, C, D, A, A, C is duplicated, so it will be A, B, C, D, A, C, E, F. So it's a very straightforward operation. So I can see it out here. So you have two string arrays. I can concatenate this. Use the concat operation out here. Mm -hmm. All right, so duplicates will also be concatenated. So this returns, you can see a I enumerable. So that is a, you have to iterate over I enumerable interface to get the new collection. A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F. That's concat, and then we have some general operations out here. We'll see what now, one by one. So general operations are uh, predominantly used to create new sequences of elements. And uh, in link, we have different types of general generation or general operations. These are default empty, range, repeat, and empty. So these link generation operations will help us to generate a new sequence of elements. So there's a table that has been defined. Right. If the collection contains empty element, then it will return default values. Okay. Empty, it returns empty collection of sequences. Range returns collection that contains a sequence of numbers. Repeat returns the collection that contains one repeated value based on a specified length. We will see that to understand it better. So first of all is the range method. Okay, range mm -hmm. method is used to generate sequence of integers or numbers based on specified values of the start index and the end index. And this is the syntax you can see. Okay. Range of 100 and 10. So we define the range method with two parameters. The first parameter shows the starting element of the integer. And the second integer is the one which tells us the limit up to which it can display the integer. So 10 elements, 100, 100, 100, 2, until 109. We'll print out 100 to 109. Okay. That is what it is going to do. So let's get an example of this. Uh, so, range right okay <clears throat> directly use the you can see i've uh, used the enumerable class range method so this is our enumerable class so if you understand it the enumerable class uh, it's a class by itself <clears throat> and i enumerable interface belongs to system dot collection dot generate you can see that okay so that is why i need this <clears throat> dot this class has range method repeat method cast method numerable okay as enumerable append method concat method contains 
So a lot of methods can be used. You can say the distinct elements at particular index number, except all these we have used already, group by, group join. You can see this. Maximum, minimum, we have used off type, order by, order by descending. Okay, we have used, we are using a range right now. You can see repeat, reverse, we've used select many, sequence equal, we've used it sometime back. So these are all methods and properties of the enumerable class. Understand it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's being used out here. Just wanted to so range 100, start with 110 numbers. Iterate up to 10 numbers from 100 to 109. And iterate over i numerable interface. And if you run this, this is going to give you from 100 to 109, 10 elements. Okay. Let's wait, wait forward this one. And then you have the repeat method. The repeat method is used to generate collection with the same numbers as the repeated times based on the specific index value. So we have the repeat method, 10, 100. So what will happen? 100. Uh, I see. That's the starting element of the integer and the second parameter is one tells how many times the same number will be repeated in sequence. So 100 will be repeated 10 times. Yeah. So I'll repeat, repeat 110 times. That's what it is doing. And iterate over the I enumerable interface. So My, if I run this, oh, that's fine. This is a hundred written times. I repeat. Um. So my question to you is that can I repeat a string value a ten times? Um, this return, yeah. Um, well, you, you'd have to change the type from int to string, right? God. Anything happened? No, it's just I still have my um I have my calendar open and every time there's an event, it just makes this annoying noise. Oh. Yeah, forget about that. No problem. Okay. Let's repeat. And then we have the empty method. The empty method is used to return. You can see empty sequence of the collection. So, so if if we use like this, this is basically going to um, define empty method to generate an empty sequence. Use it out here anyways. So here the empty of integers method will generate zero elements. Here we do not want to return any value. So in this example, in the example not above. So in the example, we define the empty method to generate an empty sequence. If you run the above, if you run the example, we will get empty results. This is the way how we can use the link empty method to generate empty sequence of collections. I play towards this. I mean, interface. 
MT. So can I get create an MT sequence of integers only? Sorry. Can I only create empty sequence from integers? It can be empty sequence of strings also, right? Yeah. Let's run this. Still, it will be empty, you can see. And let's finish this up here. A link. Okay. Now, link to objects. Interesting thing. So we'll see it. In link, we use link to objects in our application. Okay. It will give us a chance to use I enumerable or I enumerable generic type. This is I enable interface. This is I enable of generic type collection directly in link queries without the use of any intermediate link provider. Suddenly we have a link query. And then we have database or op memory objects or XML files. And there in between this, there's a link provider, right? Yeah. The diagram I showed it yesterday. So if I use link to objects, specifically for objects, we do not need any intermediators. This middle portion. I see. Not required. Okay. So Link to objects in our application will give us a chance to use I enumerable or I enumerable of, of generic type collections directly into link queries without the use of any intermediate link provider or API, such as link to SQL or link to XML. Okay. By using link to objects, we can apply the query to any enumerable collection, such as list of generic type, arrays, or dictionary of generic type with the key value pair. Link to objects provides a new way to get data from the collection with link queries. But before that, there is a need to write a lot of for each loop to get the data for the collections. Okay, link to object provides more advantages when compared to traditional for each loop. When I don't use link to objects, I have to use a lot of for each loop. With link to objects behavior, we don't need to write for each loops. And what are the advantages when compared to the traditional for each loop is when we use link to objects? Provide more readability when we use them with multiple conditions. Enables filtering, ordering, and grouping of capabilities in minimal application code. They are portal to any data sources with less or no modifications. If we use link in complex operations, then we will be seeing the benefits of using the link instead of traditional iteration loops. Okay. And link to objects, there are very link to objects parts. We have link to strings, link to string arrays, link to integer array link to files, link to lists. We can directly use them. So these are different types of linked objects. So it can be linked to strings, links to string array, link to integer array, link to files, link to lists. So we'll first see one by one, link to string and then link to string array, then link to integer array, then link to files and link to lists. So link to strings first. So link to strings is nothing but writing the link queries on string to get the required data from the string sequence. In link, we can write queries on strings along with traditional string functions and regular expressions to perform the required operations on strings using the link. Now, what is the syntax for this? For example, for link to strings, query for S in the string and convert string to lower variant and then split the string. So this two lower variant method and split method are actually methods of the string class. So from S in string, where string will be converted to a lower variant and then the string is split. So in this particular syntax, we have written a link query on strings to get the distinct element based on splitting it before splitting to convert it to a lower variant, the string. So you can look at this particular portion. This is a string method and a sub method of string. So split it and that will be used in the query syntax. So if I show an example of this, uh, you will understand it uh, much more clearly. So we have something called links to string out here. Again. They're all linked to objects behaviors. Okay, let's see this first. All right, let's see this string. Welcome to Java 
tpoint.com now welcome to anything mm -hmm. and let's see welcome to c sharp tpoint.com so here uh, what i'm going to do is that this is string one i'm first converting it to lower variant what does the lower variant do it returns a copy of the string object converted to lowercase using the casing rules of the invariant culture sure okay and what will the split do split will split yeah, and the split method returns a string array you can see that right so split based on so you can see that that it has it has five overloading methods so i'm using uh, the first parameter is a character array second one is i'm using the string split options class remove empty entries what is remove empty entries returns values does not include any elements that contains an empty string okay this is a class okay so if you put your cursor out here shift you can see all the six overloading methods of the split method i'm using this one so dot split which takes a character array and a string split options class I'm using the remove empty entries property of the string split options class. The third overloading method, this returns a string array. Okay, the split method returns a string array. And that is input to result. You can see this. So this is what the character contains an empty string and remove the empty string. That's what so split by mm -hmm an empty string split by an empty string there are empty strings out here yeah split by empty string and then remove those got it and this whatever is the value of str1 from s in this split okay and select s select this s and that is put to a result and then this is I enumerable, so I iterate about this. Okay, I got it. So run this. What do you see? Split by. You mm -hmm. see. I've split the string based on the empty string. Welcome to C sharp P point dot com. I've split the string based on the empty string. Yeah. I can say that please split the string. Uh, by hash. There's a hash out there. Yeah. And M remove the empty entries. Right. Mm -hmm. You can see. It has removed the empty entries before and after the hash. So hash is the split behavior. Welcome to C and then T point dot com. It is split by hash. Yeah. Okay. So this is directly using link to string behavior, where I can use the methods of the string class like this. Right. Yeah. So here you do not need an intermediator. You can directly use like this. That is the meaning of it. Nothing else. And then we have link to string array. So link to string array means writing the link queries on string array directly to get the required data. If we use link queries on a string arrays, we can get the required elements easily without writing the much code, which are writing too much of codes. So for example, uh, it's defined from A in array, in the string array, select A and iterate over this. In the web syntax, we have written a link query to get the data from the array the string array example of this will make life easier for you to understand this particular thing. Well, let's go out here so i have a string array i need a string array to implement link to string array and this is where from a in the array 
of this array from A in the array where A condition is A, A is converted to lower variant and starts with S. So convert everything to lower variant or lower case and then get all the values which start with S. These, this is only starting with S. Select that A, print it to a, put it to a result and iterate over I enumerable. See if I run this, I hope this is start a project here. And this I'll get SHALU, you can see that. If I say that starts with, I can use any other methods. I can say dot ends with, ends with method also. I want to basically end where A is equal to this. Ends with, for example, I'm going to end with I. So two names ends with I, I'm going to get this and this. I did it over this. You can see this. I see. So basically using a string array, I link to a string array. This is a link query, query syntax. And then I'm using this, you know, methods of the string class to work on that directly. Okay. The third part is your link to integer array. So you can understand it's an integer array by default. So link to integer array means writing the link queries on an integer array to get the required elements from the integer element. Okay. By using link query on integer arrays, we can get the required data from the integer array without writing too much of codes. And this is where. Right. So this is very straightforward again. Let's go with this. So that's an integer array. So I have to have an integer array to implement link to integer array behavior. So from A in the number array where A is greater than 10 and less than 200. So this range. So I will get this range when I iterate over the I name innumerable interface. To 600. So I can change this condition. And this condition can be only applied on numbers. So this is the integer array. So I can apply these conditions. Any comparison operations can be performed out here. Okay. Yeah. So that's the integer array. And the last one of the lot is uh, list to link to list collections. Okay, and that's basically means writing the link queries on list or collection. So by using these link queries uh, on on the collection or list, we can filter or sort or remove the duplicate items with minimum coding. Right. Sort, filter, or remove. Okay, so we can basically use this from E on the object uh, employee that is nothing but the list of collections. Select new where the new value will be the name property and the location property. So in the web syntax, we have written a link query to get the required data from the this object collection list objects. So we'll see an example of this. This makes life seem simpler because you are writing less number of codes, nothing else. Okay. So you have a class of employees with three uh, properties. Em employee ID with turn integer, name with return string, location with return string. So I'm creating a list of employees out there. And use the set method to set the values with our employee ID, name, and location. And then I'm using a link query on the collection from E on this, where E dot location equals Chennai. Select new, give the name of the person and the location. The location will be Chennai, so these two persons' name will come. And I iterate over the number of interface to give you the name and the location, which is Chennai. Run this. You can see Chennai location is coming with the name of the persons who resides in Chennai. I see. That links to list. 
so link to adio.net this is kind of you know you have to follow a couple of procedures out here okay. i will uh, e, the steps are defined out here okay the steps for basically is um, you have to um, install the sql server i'll show you the installation steps and all you have to install uh, the sql server managed in studio i've given the installation steps for that also this is the one and then you have to create a um, database with a specific name database name will be employee de details and then you have to give it um, the database name will be test db okay and then you have to create a table called as employee details and then you have to give these values data types you can follow the data types to define the data in a data table you can go through the extra information i've given and you have to insert these data in the database using the um, where's that uh, create table still uh, insert these data okay okay so i'll show you the steps out here so before that i have to uninstall everything let me uninstall everything to show you the whole process because this um, is link page yeah so i think with my configuration so far i think yeah. i have most of the stuff I, I would just need to make a another server that's different from the ones from my work so you have i am using a sql server express edition and uh, uh, um that, so uh, do you want me to show sql server express edition installation and ssms installation um you can do that but can i i want to share my screen first to see if i'm actually close to doing it already or not so you could tell me all right Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen for like a couple of seconds. Where's my there it is. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. okay. What's it called again? So this is what I have. Um and I'm not sure if this my work uses a link or not. I think they do. All right. But is this the application we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. So you have see, this is basically the uh, the management studio to manage your SQL server. So this is what you need. Open it up. Yeah. It so up. yeah, it, it's booting up right now. So I so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our own server. We're going to use our, add our own database and data table. Yeah. So, okay. So th this is what I've been always confused about. It seems as though. So what's the server name? Browse to the server name. Uh, Click on browse. Yeah. You don't so, have any servers. I don't think you have any servers. Okay. Cancel this. Cancel this also. Can I get uh, access to your screen? Um. Yeah. Uh, how do you? You would just request access, right? Or do I have to allow it? One minute. Reactions, participants. All right, more. I think you have to give me access. Uh, so remote control. Zoom would like to give control. Uh, Okay, yeah, I have to change my system. Um, accessibility. 
Okay, can you try it again? I'm not able to control your screen. All right. When you hit on request access, what does it say? Oh, there it is. Sorry. I hope this is getting recorded, right? Yeah, it is. Can you try it now? Database engine. I think my thing might be restricted to my work. I, I don't know. Probably. So what we can do is that uh, let me see that you have a SQL Server or not. Let me check it out. Let's go back. 